Hi everyone, Kendall here with Lousy Llama Creations. Today we're going to be crocheting Penny the Plant. For this tutorial, you're going to be needing medium weight for yarn in orange, green, and brown, and a small amount of black for the smile. You're going to need 10 millimeter safety eyes, tapestry needle, stitch markers, scissors, and a 5 millimeter crochet hook. Also want some stuffing. I'm going to insert clips from a past video from From the Succulent, which will show you how to make the pot, add the smile, and how to make the dirt piece. And then I'm going to pop in with this new video part of the crocheted top, which looks different than for the succulent. I then put in an old clip of sewing it to the base. So if you're, if I switch back and forth with the language a little bit, I'm just saying a different plant name. I promise you this video tutorial has all the correct parts. Just keep on going. And at the end, you'll have the most beautiful little succulent fern plant you've ever seen. Let's hop right in. Start your potted plant. We're going to do something called a magic ring. And the magic ring is how we're going to start our spiral or our circle to start our pot. To do a magic ring, you're going to place your tail or the end of your yarn in your hand like this, and you're going to form an X over your palm. Then you're going to pinch in the middle. With your hook, you're going to go under the first arm of the X, over the second arm, and pull it underneath that one. Then you're going to shimmy it off, pinch. You're going to tighten it with your finger over here. And we're gonna do something called a chain, which is where you put the yarn on top of your hook like this, and you pull through. And that's your magic ring. Don't worry, let me show that to you again. Magic rings trip up a lot of crocheters, but you just have to remember that you just have to wrap around and form an X. You have the tail forming the X, pinch in the middle, under, over, I also twist my hook down so I can scoop it. I'm twisting it up. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Here it can get a little tricky, so just go slow. This is how I hold my yarn. I have it over these three fingers and on top of here. It just kind of depends what you're comfortable with. And then for holding my hook, I hold it like you would use a knife, although a pencil grip is also really popular. It's whatever's comfortable for you. Personally, I like knife grip. That's just what I learned on. That's what I've always used. We have to do our chain one, which is placing the yarn over and pulling through. And we have our magic ring. Now we have to do six single crochets for round one. This is where we're actually gonna start making stitches and you're actually crocheting. So you're gonna place your hook underneath your two part to the circle, so it's the tail and then the loopy part. I'm tightening with my finger. This is how I control my tension. And don't worry, it's going to take a little bit for you to figure out the tightness of yarn, so don't worry right now. I have quite a bit of experience. I'm going to yarn over again, like we did with our chain, and pull up. So you have two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through. That's called a single crochet. And it's one of the most basic crochet stitches. That was one. We have to make six total. So I'm going under again. I like to hold it with my finger in our magic loops so it doesn't slide. Yarning over, pulling through. So you have two loops. Yarn over. And then here, if you're having some problems, you're gonna wanna twist your hook down so it slides through. So you have two. And then three. Something to get used to on crocheting is that movement of the hook, of up and down, up and down. But once you master that, you're gonna find crochet is a lot easier. This is my fifth. Feel free to pause the video. And my sixth. If you wanna count, you see these little V's? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Each little V is a stitch. This is a super fun part of making a magic ring. You're gonna pinch right here, and then you're gonna pull it tight. Ah, now you actually have a circle. Awesome. Okay. Now we get to use our stitch markers. 
I put mine in the last stitch I made. I'm going through both loops. This is gonna help us keep track of our spiral so that we know where the beginning and the end is. As we move on to round two, make sure you're not crocheting with this, the tail. You wanna use the yarn that's attached to your skein or your ball of yarn. For round two, it says we're gonna increase six times. An increase is two single crochets in the same spot. And you already know how to do a single crochet. So yeah, this is gonna be pretty easy. To go into the stitches, you're going to go, if you need to count, six, five, four, three, two, one. So this is our first stitch that we made. You're going to put your hook. I like to twist mine because the first round's a little tight. Twisting under, under both loops. And that's, this is where we're gonna put our two single crochets. Here's one. Don't move on to the next one. We wanna stay in the same hole, same stitch. So we have two. This is how we're gonna turn our six single crochets into 12. So in the next stitch, moving over, we're going to do it again, an increase which just means two single crochets. And we're gonna do that all the way around. I'm never too sure if I'm going crazy fast in videos, just the right speed or too slow. If you could please comment and let me know, that would help out a lot for future videos. Videos are great because you can always pause it and rewind it. You can even change the um, speed on the video. And I'll just talk really slow like a robot. But it could help you see the stitches where you need to. That was my 10th. This was our last one that we made, right? We marked it. You can either work with it in, with the stitch marker still in it or remove it. I like to move it so it stays out of the way. All right, so we have our last two. And don't forget to put the stitch marker back in the last stitch that you made. Get some more yarn out. Hope my cat doesn't steal it because she's right off camera watching me. Round three says one single crochet. We're going into the next stitch, easy peasy. And then in the next one, we're gonna do an increase. So we're turning 12 to 18. The sequence you're repeating the whole time is one single crochet and then an increase. Go ahead and repeat that all the way around. Woohoo, our circle's getting bigger. Next round, you're gonna find this repeating pattern now. We're gonna do one increase, oh, excuse me, one single crochet, the next stitch, another single crochet, and then an increase. So that's four stitches. It's one, one, increase. And then we'll do that all the way around. If I'm going too fast, don't forget there is a pattern too. If you bought the crochet kit, you'll have access to that beautiful PDF that walks you through each step of the way. This video tutorial just covers the PDF. If you don't want the kit, you can also purchase the pattern separately on Etsy. So if our last two are one single crochet and then an increase, and then two single crochet and then an increase, I bet you can guess what the next one is. You're gonna do three, one, two, three, and then an increase, and then repeat that all the way around. After that, the next round is gonna be four, and then an increase, and then five, and then an increase. And I'm gonna hop off camera and do that. I'll see you at the end of the round where it's five single crochets, and then an increase. Hey look, we're at the base of the pot. If you find that yours is a little curved, that's okay. You're still figuring out tension. This um, pattern is pretty forgiving, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Mine's pretty flat. It's almost like a hexagon, because those are where the increases stack. Our next round, we're gonna do something called the back loop only. Normally, you go through both loops, one, two, front and back. But for this round, we're actually just going to go through the back loop. So here, going the back loop, And we're gonna do that all the way around. 
here's what it looks like after that back loop only. As you can tell, we're sort of getting a ridge. It's actually going to push up, and this is going to be the bottom, and then it's going to stand up. For the next 10 rounds, we're going to be placing one single crochet in every single stitch. Before we do so, here's a trick. Take out your stitch marker, and instead of marking the stitch, you're going to mark the side of the stitch. Now, when we're putting one single crochet in every single stitch, when you come about all the way back around, you'll know it's one and you don't have to move it every single time. You're just gonna go round and round and round until it looks like this. And you have 10 rounds of single crochet. So go ahead and do those 10 rounds and I'll see you at the end and you'll be so excited because it's gonna start looking like a pot. All we have to do is add the ridge. We finished our rounds and it's totally looking like a pot now, right? So we're going to move our stitch marker back up to the top. Hello, little stitch marker. If you see cat foot, no, you don't. Okay, now we're going to do this super cool, cool stitch called a half double crochet. To do a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over before you put in the stitch. So we just did our yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. So you have three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Cool, huh? This is gonna make our ridges. Again, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through. And you're gonna do that all the way around. And when you get to the end, you're gonna say, Kendall, this is not even, my ridge is not even. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to make it even super easy stitch called a slip stitch, but we're not there yet. So let me finish this part first. Working in my last stitch, taking out the marker. And this is what I mean, you're like freaking out. You're like, this is not even, I'm, it's not gonna look like what it's supposed to. Don't worry. We're gonna do something called a slip stitch. So you're gonna insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. And we're gonna do that twice. Pull through, pull through. Oh yeah, look at that, nice and even. We're now gonna do something called fastening off. But you're gonna wanna pull a good amount of yarn. I like having a ton of extra because I don't wanna be short. Then cut your yarn and pull through. You just, I'm literally just pulling this all the way. Ugh. There we go. And that's called fastening off, so now our work can't come undone. I'm gonna take this long end. Okay, maybe it's a little too long. Yours does not need to be that long. Putting it on my tapestry needle or yarn needle. And I'm gonna fold my pot lid over and then squishing it up. And we're gonna need to sew our edges around so that we have this cute little border. Where am I? There we are. There's a hundred different ways to sew things in crochet. I'll be honest, I just want it sewn. As long as it doesn't come undone, I don't care. So for this, I'm going back and forth, and I'm trying to make sure I go through the middle of the last row of stitches, but that's just preference because I think it looks a little cleaner that way. As long as it's folded over and it has a rim, who cares, right? So I'm gonna repeat this all the way around, but when you get to the end, don't cut off your string, because we're actually gonna use that to sew your dirt in later. But for now, let me get all the way over so that we can add the smiley face. Alrighty, we're at our end. We could just set this aside for now. We'll use it to sew it later. But let's add the smile in the eyeballs. If you're using one of my crochet kits, and I sure hope you are, you're gonna be seeing these two things. Ooh, that was plastic on me. Yeah, well, that's why I have that and not put in a kit. I have all the rejects. Two eyes, two backs, and some black yarn for a smile. In the pattern, it will tell you specifically, let's put our tail in the back, where to put the eyes, but I'll be real, I don't care. I want it to look cute and adorable. So I'm placing these without the backs, so it's not set in stone, I could take it out and do it again. I'm gonna put the mouth on, so then I can even everything out. Starting from the back, I am poking through. Leave a tail. Mm, do we want a big smile? Mm, 
Let's see what that looks like. You're gonna make a straight line and it's gonna look weird. And then you go underneath and scoop it down. And then tighten. Not too much though. You get this cute little guy. Are his eyes still even? I think so. You're gonna put the backs on. You want it to go in this direction because you want it to be flush and safe. You should hear a little clicking noise, or at least feel it. Yeah, you can't hear it, but it's there. On the inside, I'm gonna tie a knot of my black yarn, not too tight, because we don't want it to pull. But we also don't want it to come undone. And then I trim it so it stays out of the way. Not too close, we don't want it to come undone. Woohoo! Oh my gosh, he's adorable. So we have this nice little pot. It sits on its own. Aren't you proud of yourself? You crocheted something. Woohoo! Now we have to make the dirt and we have to make the, the green, the actual plant part. So let's do the dirt. You remember how we did the bottom? We did the magic ring with 6, 12, 18, 20. I won't count all the way up. So you have the, it goes <laughs> increase 6. Well, six, increase six, one, increase two, increase one, two, three, increase four, increase then five, increase. We're gonna be doing the exact same thing. Why? Because we want it to fit right in it. So, I have my brown yarn. Two. Doing that magic ring again, making that X, holding, under, over, pull through, chain one, and then our six single crochets on it. If I'm going too fast, please go back to the beginning of the video and follow the steps for the bottom of the pot. I promise it's the exact same thing. But you should feel a little bit more comfortable now, right? You just made the whole pot. Ooh, ooh. Where are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six and tighten. Putting my stitch marker in. Let's get a little closer. Hi. Okay. Increase six times and increase is just 12 single crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Next round, one single crochet, and then in the next stitch, an increase. I am not going to bore you and show you the exact same thing. You're going to do this until it's increase and then five single crochets all the way around. Then you're going to fasten off, you know, just cutting and pulling through. Then you'll have your dirt, which I can show you. Looks like this, but not in hot pink. It's going to be in brown. But that's the idea of what we're doing. The exact to start our actual part of the plant, our leafy part. I want to start with a slip knot. I have the end of my yarn. I'm just gonna twist and pull. Hello, peanut. Thank you. I have my tail. I have it here. If you've made a slip knot before, it's just like making a normal slip knot. Twisting and pulling through. Thank you, peanut. We're gonna be working on top of peanut. I'm gonna insert my hook. My tail is right here. I'm inserting in the other direction. And I'm gonna pull tight. Not too tight. That you can't move it, not too loose, that it comes off. Just like a little wiggle room. We're gonna chain nine, which is when we pull the yarn through the loop. So we place the yarn on top, pull through, that's one chain. Thanks, Peanut. So that's one. Place the yarn on top, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, 
<laughs> one more peanut and nine. Now we're gonna be doing a couple different stitches, but we're gonna be working back in the other direction down our chains. The first stitch we're going to do is a slip stitch, which is one of the smallest stitches. So this was chain nine. We're gonna ignore it and we're gonna go into our eighth chain. I'm just gonna place my hook anywhere within the chain. Technically, yes, it matters where you put your hook in a chain. For beginners, I say it doesn't matter. We're just working on, on learning right now. Now that our hook is through the stitch, you're gonna yarn over and pull through and then pull through again. And that's a slip stitch. In the next chain, I'm gonna insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through. For this whole line, we're gonna do two slips, two single crochets, two half double crochets, and then two double crochets. So now that we did our two slip stitches, we have to do two single crochets. So I'm gonna insert my hook, and make a single crochet, which you are a master at by now. And then I'm gonna repeat it in the next chain. And then half double crochets, which you did for the end of the pot. We're going to yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through all three. And again, we'll do that. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. The next two, our last two, are double crochets. It's very similar to a half double, but a little taller. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through one. So you have three loops. We're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. See, it's a little taller. Again, yarn over and insert. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. And then yarn over, pull through two again. And that's like one little leaf that we have. We're not gonna fasten off. We're gonna keep on making leaves on our line. So we're gonna chain nine. You don't have to do another slip knot or anything. We're literally just continuing off of this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna repeat the exact same thing. Skip that ninth, make a slip stitch into our eighth which is yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. Do another slip stitch. And then two single crochets. One, two. And then two half doubles, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through yarn over, pull through all three, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Now two doubles, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And again, one more double. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through another two. Now we have our second little leaf and we're gonna keep on repeating that. So chain nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you're gonna do the same leaf pattern. 
you're going to do this so you have a total of 14 leaves. So it kind of looks like this, which is a little messy because of all my tails. But I have 14 little leaves. So go ahead and do that. So you have 14 of these guys. And then you're going to cut your yarn and fasten off like you're used to, cutting and pulling through. But leave your tail really long because we're going to use it for sewing. To sew this together, I'm going to take my nice long tail and I'm going to put it on my tapestry needle. Pulling through a little bit so it doesn't come off. And we're going to wrap this up and then we're going to stitch the bottom so it all stays together. So you can put this on the inside or the outside, it doesn't matter. I'm thinking it might be easier on the inside, but it really doesn't matter. It's a little easier if I do it on a flat surface though. I'm gonna leave my tail over here so it doesn't get tangled and I'm gonna wrap it. I'm having like it curves naturally. I'm having that on the outside so my leaves kind of stick out, but that's a personal preference. Do whatever you'd like. And I'm going to wrap this up, making sure my bottom's pretty lined up, but it's okay if it's not perfect. It's pretty long, so I might get a little rearranged. I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna stitch a little bit. Because this is the bottom, you don't have to worry about it looking pretty or perfect because it's the bottom, we don't care. I'm just gonna go through twice just so I have something holding it together. Uh, maybe a third because I wanna make sure I have my middle kind of wiggling in. Yeah, I'm trying to get all those good layers. Cool, that feels nice. And I'm gonna keep on rolling. Put my tail over there again. Okay. Trying not to get tangled. There we go. Just gonna hold it and I'm gonna stitch a whole bunch making sure I go through all the layers. So our pretty little spiral and our little plant continues to look like a plant. It doesn't come apart. I would just take your time, stitch where necessary. And again, it's the bottom and it's the same color. So it really won't show, I promise you. I'm going a little deeper, not just right on the bottom. Ooh, it's looking good though. <laughs> I sound so surprised if I didn't design this and already make this prior to filming this video. There we go. I think one or two more. Oops, I don't want to pull through my leaves. I don't want those getting stuck under it. It will totally ruin the effect. Yeah, look at that. Doesn't that look like a little, a little fern? But not fern the succulent. This is Penny the plant. Now I'm gonna put this, this is my tail from the other end. I'm now gonna sew it to the brown. Again, because this is the bottom, we're not gonna see it. We don't really care what it looks like. I'm gonna stitch into the brown just so I can get my tails kind of situated. Pulling down. And then I'm just gonna stitch from the bottom to the middle. I like doing mine in the middle just because I think it adds a little bit of tension to the point so you can kind of pull down a little bit like this and it kind of gives it like a more planty effect that's like the roots or like the middle part that's kind of deeper into the plant or the dirt. I'm going to do this a couple times. I can also go a little bit on the outside just to make sure these edges are down. We don't have a huge base, but we do want to make sure. Our plant's not gonna like go away with the wind, you know, when you like don't put it enough in like your real pot and dirt. We don't want that. So I'll go a little bit on the outside. A little bit more in the middle. Stick one right there for funsies. 
I want to test a little bit. Huh? Yeah, I want some over here. A few more. He looks so ferny. Oh my gosh, I love him. Make sure your tail's out in the bottom because this will make it super easy to hide our tails. I'm gonna put my extra tails on my needle and poke through the bottom. We don't just wanna like cut our yarn because it will come undone. We don't want that, all your hard work. I just like to make sure it's all on the bottom. This one's technically on the edge so I'm kind of like scooping it through the bottom a little bit. Don't pull too tight because then your dirt will get messed up. I'm going to tie, I don't know what type of knot this is, a knot on the bottom, not crazy tight, but it's not going anywhere, and then trim. We could then use this for stuffing later, but we have our little fern plant, Penny the plant, and his little prickly little leaves. I'm now going to pop in the rest of the video, which shows on Fern the Succulent sewing the dirt to the pot because it is exactly the same thing, but this is how you make that different plant top. To sew it to the inside of our pot, I'm going to put my orange tail back on my tapestry needle. I'm going to zoom us out a little bit. Howdy, howdy. Okay. I'm going to take the dirt and place it inside. And you're going to have to hold it, hold both layers. My tail for the orange is already on the inside of the pot. So I'm going to go through the front loop of the brown. And then I'm going to go back only through the orange. Again, so you're going to go, I'm going like right under the rim of the pot, going through orange, through brown, then back only through orange. One more time, through orange into brown, down only through orange. I'm gonna do this about three quarters of the way around and then we're gonna stuff. So I just sewed about three quarters of the way around, but we gotta stuff it before we close it. Trick to stuffing, you wanna pull in small clumps and place it individually. This helps give you a fuller look. You don't have to use as much stuffing and ugh, you can place the stuffing exactly where you want so it looks exactly how you want it. I like a flat bottom, so I place stuffing around the edges as opposed to in the middle but you stuff it however you want. I'm gonna make sure my dirt kind of sticks up a little bit because I want everyone to see my pretty succulents I worked so hard on. You can also use yarn scraps in the middle if you don't wanna waste those. So you wanna pull, mm, I think he needs a little bit more. All right, going around the edges again. Put some right on top. <laughs> there we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's looking real cute. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a blast making Penny the Plant. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and follow my channel and continue to find more crochet tutorials for beginners and intermediates and everyone in between. If you want to stay up to date on everything fun, I would follow us on TikTok at Lousy Llama Creations where I post new crochet kits and tutorials and patterns and we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up for the holiday season that I'm very excited to share. Again, my name is Kendall and I will see you in the next video. Bye!